In this video, we'll start off with an overview of the DS Agile Studio and then look at the screen and structure, followed by global system preferences. Next, we look at the offline editor, online editor, the IC61850 loader, logic links, archive management, device snapshot management, and lastly, typical MCP configuration steps using DSAS. Let's jump in and get started. DS Agile Studio, or DSAS, is the latest generation of configuration tool for the GE Grid Solutions substation automation products. DSAS includes MCP Studio for G500, G100, D400, DMC490, and D2X Studio for legacy D2X devices. We'll focus on the MCP Studio in this module, thus DSAS herein below refers to DS Agile MCP Studio. If there's a need or desire to run both parts of DS Agile Studio at the same time, an example to configure G500 and D20MX in one session, a single button can be clicked to activate the remaining functionality. There's no need to exit one tool and start the other. The user can use DS Agile MCP Studio's offline and online configuration tool to customize the following aspects of the MCP G500 G100 configuration. Communication connections, device data collection, master station data presentation, alarm annunciation, data calculation, data logging, operational one-line diagrams, user management, HMI preferences, email notification, open VPN and secure SCADA, pass-through and terminal server, device redundancy, IEC 61131-3 automation uh, using logic links, IEC 61850 client using IEC 61850 loader. The user can download the DS Agile Studio ISO image uh, file from GE Grid Solution website and then open the downloaded ISO image file and run setup.dsagilestudio.exe and follow the prompted instructions to install. The DSAS screenshots consist of the following elements. Project Toolbar. Available functions are New Project, Open Project, Validate Project, Close Project, Restore Project, and Archive Project. Note that when you open DSAS for the first time, you'll need to create a new project. Main Tab Area. Four tabs are available. They are File, Configure, Windows, and Preference. Ribbon Area. The configuration tab provides the following set of ribbon commands when no device is selected. Edit, Draw, Archive, Page, and Miscellaneous. The Configure tab provides the following set of ribbon commands when a gateway device is selected. Edit, Draw, Archive, Page, and Miscellaneous, Communications, Configuration, Logic Links, IEC 61850, and Tools. The Offline Editor provides the following set of ribbon commands. Session, One-Line Designer Images, Client Maps, Server Maps, one-line diagram, and editor. Local repository. After a project has been opened, the local repository slide-out pane provides access to the following. Device templates. Its tree view of device templates lists the available devices. Reference documents, navigator. The structure of a project is most evident when viewing the project from the local repository navigator. It shows the DSAS project structure in similar fashion to a directory structure in Windows Explorer in the tree view of projects, pages, devices, and applications. Project Page Pane. Project Page is a project container that's used to group devices into convenient collections within the project. Typically, each page represents a substation bay. Device Symbol. A device is defined as a piece of equipment and its configured firmware. A device always belongs to a project. Output window. When no log is currently shown at the bottom of the DS Agile Studio window, select the output window checkbox on the ribbon to view the project log, terminal log, or device log output window. If a log is currently shown at the bottom of the DS Agile Studio window, deselect the output window checkbox to close the log output window. You can reduce the information displayed in the output window by toggling the state of the various checkboxes to match your preferences. You can also search for specific text, online help button, zoom slider. You can move the DSAS window panes 
to docked or floating windows. Multiple floating windows are allowed. If you close DSAS and open it again, DSAS opens with the same window configuration as when DSAS was closed. When a second container is opened and you select floating, the second floating window appears in the same location as the previous floating window. To change a docked pane to a floating window, right click the pane name tab, click float or double click the pane name tab. To return the floating window to a docked DSAS window pane, right click the pane name tab and then click move to main document group. The preferences tab allows you to customize the system preferences and to manage your software licensing. When the general tab is selected, these groups of parameters are available. Display of warnings, device status, user interface and file browsing, log information, report error information, memory information and performance, device images and tooltips, navigator icon, logic links editor. The licensing tab allows you to manage your software licensing for DSAS and the 32-bit logic links editor. The products list at the top of the tab window allows you to view your current license status. The buttons allow you to request extension to an evaluation license, request license, apply license, deactivate license. This allows a customer to transfer a software license from one computer to another. Request floating license. This button only appears if a LogicLink software license is selected in the products list. The details panel shows the details of the selected license in the products list. More detailed information can be found in the DSAS online help. The offline configuration tool, Offline Editor, is an important component of DSAS, which is used to create, edit, and update the MCP configuration that includes IEDs, master stations, automation applications, HMI settings, security settings, or system configurations, etc. The Offline Editor can be accessed via the Editor button under the Configuration ribbon category when the MCP device is selected. You need to click Save Session to save all committed changes made before you exit the Offline Editor. All the configuration changes will not take effect on the MCP device until the Sync to Device operation is performed. Specifically, the Offline Editor is used to set up serial or network connections to devices and master stations, create and select point maps for clients and servers, configure alarms, create automation by using calculator, create automation using the system point manager, configure the data logger, configure load shed, set system wide preferences, configure to acquire files for ARM, create one line diagram, create secure SCADA and open VPN server configurations, you can always click the help button or press F1 with the online editor to see more uh, context sensitive help information. The online configuration tool, online editor, is a configuration tool in connected mode to the actual MCP device that can be used to configure most configurations like the offline editor does, with some exceptions. In addition, the online editor can also be used to configure the access feature and provide certificate utilities. The online editor can be accessed via the connect button under the communications ribbon category when the MCP device is selected. It is required to log in using administrator credentials. All the configuration changes will be made to the actual MCP device right after you click the save button, followed by commit changes. It's recommended to perform the sync from device operation after you make changes to a configuration in the online editor so that the configuration can be synchronized and updated between the actual MCP device and the DSAS MCP device. Some exceptions for the online editor are limited ribbon options, can't configure IC61850 server. With the additional access tab, you can set up user management, authentication, HMI automatic login, VPN client list. With the additional utilities tab, you can perform these operations from the online editor, SSH login, certificate import, certificate management, generate gateway key pair, export VPN client files, upload SSL server certificate slash server key. You can always click the help button or press F1 within the online editor to see more context sensitive help information. The IEC 61850 loader 
uh, commonly referred to as the loader, is specifically designed to configure the MCP to communicate to the IC61850 compliant server devices. Using the loader, you can create client configurations that identify the devices, points and reporting and polling information required to set up the communications between the IEC 61850 compliant server devices and the MCP device. The loader makes use of the self-description capabilities of the IEC 61850 protocol and device information files provided by most devices to simplify and speed up configuration of the IEC 61850 client application. The loader can be accessed via the loader button under the IEC 61850 ribbon category when the MCP device is selected. You'll need to click the Generate Client button to generate IEC 61850 client maps after you save changes and exit the loader. Note that an additional license is required to enable the IEC 61850 client application on the MCP device. Once configured and generated, the IEC 61850 devices are available for view only under Network Connections-IEC 61850 blocks section of the Connection tab in the Offline Online Editor. You can always click the Help button or press F1 within the loader to see more context-sensitive help information. Logic Links is a tool that enables the user to create automation applications that have traditionally been too costly or difficult to implement, all without hard wiring. Using any or all of the IC611-31-3 programming languages, the user can create automation routines that run on the MCP. An additional license is required to enable the Logic Links executor application on the MCP device. The Logic Links 32-bit editor can be ordered as either software licenses or USB dongles. Evaluation and software licenses are obtained within the DSAS through Global System Preferences License tab. USB dongles are obtained by contacting GE Grid Solutions Sales. The Logic Links wizard can be accessed via the wizard button and Logic Link editor can be accessed via the editor button under the Logic Links ribbon category when the MCP device is selected. The Logic Links wizard is used to configure and upload the Logic Links application to your MCP. Define the connection type, serial or ethernet, define Logic Links own points, define map points, the Logic Link Editor is used to create IEC 611.31-3 compliant automation routines by using textual and graphic languages. Sequential functions chart, structured text, ladder diagram, function block diagram. Refer to SWM 0107 Logic Links in the Multilin MCP Quick Start Guide for more details. You can always click the Help button or press F1 within the Logic Link Editor to see more help information. DS Agile MCP Studio has the option to archive the entire local repository, an entire project and an individual device, and then restore it to the same or different machines in which the DS Agile MCP Studio is installed. Archive management for project, local repository, customer support bundle can be accessed via file, archive. The local repository can contain many projects. DSAS can save, restore all the projects available in the local repository. A project can contain many devices. DSAS can save, restore all the devices available on the project page. DSAS also offers the option to extract a folder for customer support bundle archives collected by the MCP CSB tool. Archive management for individual devices can be accessed by the Save, Restore option under the Archive ribbon category or by right-clicking Menu, Archive, Save, Restore when the MCP device is selected. Note that while saving the project or device archive, the user will have an option to reset ID and email passwords in the restored devices. Once reset, they cannot be recovered and will have to be entered manually. Device Snapshot is an archived image of the device which includes all configuration and settings required to completely recover an MCP device taken at a given time in the form of a special compressed file. There are two types of snapshots, standard snapshot. Standard snapshot is used between one MCP to any MCP of the same firmware version. Standard snapshot may contain user credentials, internal save secrets, network settings and logs, if the user selects the option to include them. The name of the standard snapshot ends with the extension star.mcpsnapshot.ds7.zip. MCP clone snapshot. 
MCP clone snapshots may be used with the same firmware version or across different firmware versions from one version to a newer one. MCP clone snapshots contain all information associated with a running MCP, configurations, settings, users, internal configured secrets for IED access, etc., except certificates. MCP clone snapshots are the primary instrument used as a source image in disaster recovery workflows. The name of the MCP clone snapshot contains the extension star.mcpclonesnapshot.ds7.zip. Using DS Agile MCP Studio, snapshots can be saved from the MCP using only administrator user credentials. Snapshots can be restored to the MCP using defadmin default credentials or any other configured administrator user credentials. The snapshot save and restore workflow can be started from either one of the following. From the Riven archive save slash restore or sync from slash to device dropdown list. From device or project page, right click menu. From File, Archive Menu, refer to the application note AN0015 MCP Snapshot and Configuration Workflows for a full understanding of the included data types in snapshots of both types and their associated save, restore options in workflows. Once system settings are configured using the MCP Gateway Local Configuration Utility Settings or MCP CFG or MCP Settings GUI, use the DS Agile MCP Studio's online and offline configuration tool to configure the MCP's gateway slash SCADA configuration. The typical sequence of steps involved in configuring MCP from DS Agile MCP Studio are as follows. Create a project if not using an existing project. Create an MCP device by dragging the MCP icon from the device template into the project page. Fill out the device properties licensing and redundancy info as desired. Optional, perform sync from device to get the current system settings from the MCP device. Open the offline editor to create and edit client device maps. Set up device serial and network connections except the IEC 61850 client, including protocol-specific parameters. If needed, configure automation applications including digital event management, calculator, system point management, etc. Create and edit server master station maps. Set up master station serial and network connections, including protocol-specific parameters. If needed, configure other applications including the data logger, ARM, one line diagram, etc. If needed, configure pass through, terminal server, secure connection relay, and open VPN connection. Run logic links to configure if the IC 611 31 3 compliant automation is needed. Run the IC 61850 loader to configure if the IC 61850 client needs to be configured. Open the online editor to configure system security related settings, an example, certificates, if needed. Perform sync to device to transfer the saved and committed configuration to the MCP device. The DS Agile MCP Studio validates the changes and reports any errors. Once a configuration is validated and committed to the MCP through the sync to device option, the previous configuration files are replaced with the new files and all the MCP applications are restarted to reflect the new configuration changes. All gateway SCADA configuration information for an individual MCP is stored as a set of configuration files. The configuration files are saved into the solid state drive on the MCP. And lastly, the configuration files are stored as XML files. Lastly, I want to thank you for watching this training content video. And if you're looking for more great content, take a minute and check out the resources hub on the GE website. You can do that by typing resources.gegridsolutions.com into your browser or just click the link in the description of this video and it'll take you right there. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time.